We're back with the talk of the nation. The big stories everyone is talking about today. Joining me now are criminal defense attorney Eric Guster and attorney and radio host Midwin Charles. Thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we start tonight with tough questions for the NFL at the Baltimore Ravens running back, Ray Rice, received just a two-day suspension for a violent fight with his wife, who was his fiancée at the time. The incident was caught on camera in February. TMZ Sports posted this video on their website showing Rice dragging his then-fiancée, Janae Palmer, out of an elevator in Atlantic City. She appears unconscious as he drags her out. Rice was arrested and charged with aggravated assault. Rice pled not guilty and avoided trial by entering a program for first-time offenders that could clear him of any jail time or prosecution. He and Janae Palmer married in March. They held a press conference together in May to discuss how they were moving forward. I am working every day to be a better father, a better husband, you know, and just a better role model. I love Ray, and I know he will continue to prove himself. Rice said in a statement that it's disappointing that he'll miss the first two games. But many fans and critics say the punishment doesn't go far enough. Midwin, does the punishment fit the crime? It doesn't. Um, if the NFL wants to send uh, a message where they are serious about domestic violence or domestic abuse, then what they will do is punish him accordingly. In the NFL right now, if you were tested positive for steroids, you get an automatic four-game suspension. So essentially what this, the NFL is saying here is that they don't think that what happened to this woman is as serious as if a player had tested positive for steroids. You know, Eric, she mentions NFL rules. Right now, for the first substance abuse violation, players get a four-week suspension. For their second uh, substance abuse violation, they get an eight-week suspension. The Minnesota Viking coach made a homophobic remark in uh, 2012. He got a three-week suspension handed down to him yesterday. A lot of people say in light of this, he gets two games. Two games is simply not enough. This wasn't a, a simple argument between two people. He knocked this lady completely out, Reverend Al. That is beyond a simple assault. That is something much more, much more sinister than an assault. This should have been much higher than what he received. He received a misdemeanor and got literally off with a program. This should have been a felony. Because when a man hits a woman at all, ever, but knocks her out with that type of power, he should be reprimanded beyond two games. And, 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 and let's be clear, the NFL conduct policy says person who engage in criminal activity will be subject to discipline, and they specifically point to criminal offenses, including but not limited to those involving the use or threat of violence, domestic violence, mm -hmm. and other forms of partner abuse. But a lot of people are defending him, saying... She didn't press charges. The victim didn't press charges. But, but sometimes if a victim doesn't press charges, that doesn't necessarily mean that the offender didn't commit a crime. A lot of times women don't press charges for a variety of reasons. They are either afraid of the aggressor or they have been, you know, beaten, for lack of a better word, into submission. In other words, they are scared for their lives. So the fact that she didn't press charges to me is insignificant. The video speaks for itself. This woman was lying lifeless on the floor, and we're lucky, she's lucky, that she didn't suffer any severe injuries from whatever beating she took at his hand. Does the fact that now we have this kind of precedent that many consider a low bar also disturb a lot of the critics that this is more than just this particular victim because now you have a precedent that two games yeah. uh, is the, uh, the bar now for knocking out a woman. Right, and it shows that the NFL simply does not care about women. Now, it cares if you smoke weed, it cares if you use steroids, steroids <laughs> but it doesn't care about you knocking a woman completely out. That shows the good old boy network within the NFL, the tough boy network. You can hit your woman, you can slap her around, but don't smoke weed and don't use steroids, which may 
devalue the integrity of the game, as they say. And NFL needs to take a take a stand on this because this sends a message to young men and boys. It's okay to do this. Let me go real quick to uh, uh, another topic. We just have a minute, but we move uptown to the Bronx, and that sleepy Yankee fan that <laughs> broke his silence today, you remember uh, Andrew Rector was caught on camera earlier this month taking a snooze in the middle of a uh, Yankee game. The announcers on ESPN had some fun ribbing him in the seventh inning siesta he was having. <laughs> Not the place you come to sleep. I tell you what, though, how comfortable is that? Probably won't have any neck problems tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, is that guy to his left, his buddy, who's just letting him sleep, or is he here alone? What's the deal well, with this guy? Maybe, he, maybe that's his buddy, and he likes him a lot better when he's asleep. <laughs> now, when he woke up, Rector decided to sue ESPN, the announcers, Major League Baseball, and the Yankees for $10 million for, quote, an avalanche of disparaging words against him. This morning, he sat out with Matt Lauer and explained why he thinks his suit holds water. Aren't there other things to focus on in the game? I mean, that's what these guys are getting paid for, to sit there and, and I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I paid to go to that game. You know, I, I brought friends over there. I have a reputation as well. I mean, for them to sit there and make fun of somebody, I, I don't see, but I don't see how that's acceptable. You know, Eric, does, does he have a leg to stand on with this lawsuit? None. When you go to a Yankees game, you're aware that there are cameras. You are aware that you're in the public view and public eye. And nothing disparaging was actually said about him. Because in order for a case like that to survive, it has to be disparaging remarks that are not true. And if, even in the lawsuit, Reverend Al, he, they listed that he said they were calling him fatty and different things like that. And that simply was not the case. They said the man fell asleep and you know, talked about, joked about his friend, which I think was fair game. I mean, but, but let's face it, uh, the man fell asleep. Uh, I mean, we've seen kooky lawsuits before. <laughs> Is there any way he can get anything out of here? Maybe get a settlement. Maybe it's about making them give him something. No, the only thing he's going to get out of this is a laugh. I mean, Eric is right. All the points that he made about how this is just not going to fly are great. But most importantly, he just needs to get over himself. I am surprised that any attorney would sign on the dotted line to this complaint because attorneys have certain rules and regulations that they must abide by as to whether or not they think a, a, a claim or a complaint is truthful or accurate. He's not getting anything with this. Well, he's, he's, he got me nervous. I don't tease people that go to sleep during my speeches anymore. <laughs> Finally, an update to a story we told you about earlier this year. Back in March, 18-year-old Rachel Canning, a high school cheerleader and honor student, sued her parents, Sean and Elizabeth, for money to go to college. Rachel claimed physical and verbal abuse, but the parents say it was just discipline that they didn't approve of her boyfriend who refused to break up with the, uh, break up with, at the time, she wouldn't uh, break up with him. The suit was dropped. But maybe Rachel should have listened to her parents. This week, she got a restraining order against that boyfriend, accusing him of choking her during an argument after midnight last Saturday night. Midwin, here's the question. Should teenagers be able to sue their parents? No. At least not for the claims that she has, which is she wants her parents to pay all her bills. She's 18. She needs to, again, get over herself. Eric? Absolutely not. Unless the parents were abusive or something, no, they should not be able to sue. That's what parenting is. You shouldn't be dating this boy. Get over it. And obviously they were right. Eric Gusta, Midwood Charles, thank you both for your time tonight. Have a good weekend. Thank you.